Hi there, so with the 2018 Alteryx Inspire conference just around the corner, in fact I think we're five days away from the conference, I wanted to put together a new video series that focused on Alteryx for the Excel user. So those folks that are diehard Excel users, they are coming over from that environment and they want to pick up Alteryx fast. So that's what the series is dedicated to. We're going to start off with some very simple concepts and then get into the details that I think most of the Excel users are interested in learning to get up and running quickly. So uh, the first thing we're going to focus on here is how to get data. That's that's probably the, the primary and, and most important thing you're going to do when you start Alteryx. So I'm going to run through what I think most Excel users are going to be doing and, and how they're going to access the data. And then we'll get into some, some of the more detailed uh, input components and, and connections. But I won't go into really, really deep detail about how to connect to them, but just know that they're, they're available. So uh, with that, we'll get rolling here. So if you're coming over from Excel, what is going to be your friend is the, the in and out tab here. And I've got a couple of the items starred, which means I've made it a favorite. And uh, the input tool is probably going to be uh, your go-to. Uh, to begin with. So I'm going to drag the input tool onto the canvas here and immediately in this left pane I am going to get configuration properties for the input tool and I'm going to click this down arrow here and I have the ability to choose a file uh, and I'll show you the different file types. There are a lot of them. This isn't really any different than the file tool that's in a uh, file menu that's in Excel. I can connect to SQL Server, very similar to the Get Data button inside Excel. I can connect to an Oracle database. I can connect to Hadoop. And then I can save some file connections here, which are, uh, initially you won't have. So let's choose File. And then uh, what I have is a temp folder set up that has some files in it here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this down arrow and show you uh, the different file types that we have access to from Alteryx. So I can pull in a straight text file. Uh, I have some different Alteryx files. I can use a CSV file. I can pull in uh, JSON if you're in Excel and you're comfortable using that. You can do that as well. Uh, tab delimited files work. Uh, if you have an access database where you've been storing some of your data working with in Excel, you can attach to an access database. Uh, the different versions of Excel are available as well. S SAS, SPSS, SQLite, Excel files, zip files, so all of those are available data types. What I have in this test here is a very simple uh, Excel file, so I'm going to choose uh, Excel as the type, and then I'm going to take this first test file here. and um, it will let you choose different sheets. So if I had more than one sheet in here, I could choose the named sheet that I have. Uh, if I have a named range, I can do that as well. Uh, uh, that's an option for me. Uh, so I'm going to leave it on sheet one and uh, I'll get a preview of the values that are in there. The other thing I'm going to do is pull over a browse tool and drop that on the canvas and then we're just going to run it real quick and see what we've got. And this is just a sample file. So I have A, B, and C and 1, 2, and 3 as values. So taking Excel a step further, what you may end up doing in Excel and what a lot of users do is they'll have more than one Excel spreadsheet and maybe they're copying data between Excel spreadsheets or between sheets. If you're doing that, then the option you have in Alteryx is to take a wildcard character. So in this case, I have test underscore 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03. I'm just going to throw an asterisk in the file name there. And uh, we're going to run this workflow again. This time it's going to pull in all three files and when I look at my browse tool I can see that I've pulled in uh, the three files I had alphabetical order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, H, I and then the numbers one through nine with just three numbers in each of those. So very quickly was able to pull in all three Excel spreadsheets. Basically the concept here is I'm unioning them together or combining them together into one complete data set. 
And again, I could have I could have told it in the table selection here to pull in specific sheets if I wanted to. So anytime you see this table or query for Excel users, that's the sheet name that you're going to be pulling in. And they don't all have to be in the same directory. Uh, they could be a little it could be a little bit more dynamic. That's getting into a little bit deeper and a more advanced level, but I do have a video up already on how to use the dynamic input tool if your files are in different locations in your file structure or data data structure. Okay, so that's the very basic uh, way of pulling in data. Uh, let me talk about text input here. So so I just pulled in a data file, but let's say I wanted to create my own uh, data set here and you can think of this as if I were going to create a lookup table or a separate tab or worksheet within my Excel spreadsheet or I wanted to have custom values they're not stored in a database anywhere they should be but maybe they're not so in this case what I would do is uh, I'm gonna set up another column here and I'll call it name and I'll have another column called value and these are these are very similar to the files that I pull in exact they'll, they'll match exactly the same uh, and then I'm gonna add uh, X Y and Z onto the end of this and uh, as the values we will do uh, 26 25 and 24 all right uh, so I, again, I can think of this as maybe I would use it as a custom lookup if I were to do a VLOOKUP, which I'm going to put together in a subsequent video. Uh, and it could be a separate input if I wanted it to be, so I'll, I'll drag a browse over here and we can see what it looks like when it comes over. I have name and the value, uh, and then maybe I want to join them together. And in that case, I'll use the join tool or I'll go to the join menu and uh, in the join I'm actually going to union them. I'm, I'm not really going to join them together uh, and we'll make this come out in one more browse tool at the end and then we'll run it and uh, and you'll see the same concept so I have I have the three files coming in and then I have that X Y and Z which was a custom uh, text input that I built. So very quickly, we're getting off the ground running here pretty fast. Being able to import data from different file types, I can create my own custom text input and don't let the text input fool you or scare you there. I can change the value to be not just text but to be a numeric. It could be a decimal number or whatever I need it to be. I can change those types as well. Let's dig a little bit deeper. So if it's not just a simple file, I also have the option to choose a couple different uh, data sources within Alteryx. So uh, I'm going to go over to the connectors tab and uh, just quickly run through some of the different connectors that we have. So if I have data sitting out on Amazon S3, I can pull in a tool here to download data from S3. I can also upload data to S3. I can use the download tool to pull information off the web. Maybe it's a, I have a URL or I have an API that I can pull data from. That's available to you as well. Foursquare, Google Analytics. Uh, if I'm using NoSQL databases like MongoDB, I can pull data from there, output data to that. Salesforce is an option. SharePoint. Love SharePoint. Use it quite a bit to pull data off lists and put data out to lists. So that's available to you as well. And then I pulled in the Twitter search tool. This doesn't come with AlterX, the newest version of AlterX uh, standard as a stock tool, but you can download it from the gallery, which leads me into use the gallery if you want something that is not in part of the AlterX install, but's available out on the public gallery. Uh, they're free. Download them from there, and uh, you can connect to a bunch of different data sources. You can also output data. So I have another one that I use for Power BI, where I can push data out to the Power BI service, uh, which is something some Excel users do when they're modeling their data before getting it ready to send it out to Power BI. So those are available there. The last piece that we have is in the developer tab here. In uh, uh, there's not a lot in here to to run, but I wanted to highlight some of the things that you can you can do here. So again, it's very similar to the download tool. I can output uh, data to an API if I have that available. Uh, for data sets that or directories that are dynamic, here's the dynamic input tool. And like I said, I have a separate video on how to use the dynamic input tool. We can also parse JSON data if we have uh, have that as a data source also.
So that's a real quick overview of how to get started with pulling data in and actually getting data for those of you using Excel. As always, leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything else that I should cover and subscribe to the channel to get the rest of the Alteryx uh, for Excel user updates. Thanks.